be lovely 5D mystics in the Enlightenment Soul Age group who are functional adults and want to build those relationships. We have some table talk episodes coming up. And this is where I'm doing a little pre since we also have tomorrow's new moon. So 5D mystics also get to have a very unique, beautiful experience with moving into that enlightenment soul age group, which is aka personal development. So it's an integrated brain and restorative embodied self. It's the optimal health, inner well-being and mental health of a person. So we get here by choosing love, the love button. And some people will have done it all on their own. Others will let us know about their story. I can only share from my perspective. And so as somebody who is that uh, voice of the HP channel, you can better bet that all that comes out when my lovely loved ones poke at me is love. And so the aspects of our charge states we actually learn as we're growing up with that age. So every one of those ages while some people stay within the charge states and they do not take that unresolved trauma and handle it and they use it against each other, the Zen masters, which is the Enlightenment Soul Age Group, we, we don't do that. We learn how to harness our own mind. And that's because we don't get poked and be like, oh, I'm, now I'm ashamed of myself because you yelled at me. Oh, now I'm going to feel guilty. I didn't do anything bad. I don't know why you're shaming, blaming, or faulting. Or why you're being vengeful, spiteful, um, tripping, you know, like when kids do the whole, I'm going to trip you just to create havoc. So here's where 5D mystics also know that evil is a word that was used in religious texts and philosophers way in the past today. When we use it, I try to explain there is not evil or devil as a 5D mystic. You will know that too. And if you're not one, here's where 5D mystics know that there is not evil. What there is is a person with a body, they were a zero year old, and if their attachment system didn't get contingent communication, they're not going to have a actually restorative embodied self experience, and they also are going to have this rupture that equals heartbreak, gut wrench, and that's actually very sad. They're going to have a defectiveness feeling inside them. The way Basil van der Kolk describes it, Ruth Lanus as well, is that it's like you're torn apart, so you feel actual disgust inside your own body. And when I've talked to some people that have dissolved their defectiveness shame button and they've moved out of complete dysregulated or modulated embodied experiences, they actually do explain how awful they have feelings of inside with their own self. So this is hell in their body which is why heaven in your body is actually that 5D plane and Purusha Prakriti. These are words that I know they mean something that is not anywhere near related to being a human for the people who only do yoga or only do holistic. I get to translate. So when you're in your Purusha awareness and you're unconsciously loving, it's a human being. That's, thank you, also Stephen Porges, Daniel Siegel, my human elements people, they're science people, and they know a lot about the human body and I get to learn about trauma and somatics and the polyvagal theory, because thankfully there's education out there, and I love learning. Uh, apparently some people, they only love pointing fingers, not learning. So learning independently, maha samadhi samadhi. I also know these words because of reading what they are and embodying. So 5D mystic easily in the Enlightenment Soul Age group knows what I'm talking about, because we have integration of the brain, so left, right. We're both, both, all hands on deck. Daniel Siegel, who explains to therapists how the brain is made, and it's beautiful, and how the mind works. All hands on deck, our human brain default mode network is downregulated. So the oats, others in the self, which is neuroception, it usually scans to see, can I turn on my social engagement, the ventral vagus nerve, it's becoming a trending topic. So here's the deal, 5D mystic in the enlightenment, so age group, we're automatically in our green. Social engagement, excuse me. So if somebody's yelling at me, I'm not getting into like, oh, I need to defend them. No, and in fact, actually, I don't get into that. Most, I probably will notice my nervous system more than anything. So if I have in front of me somebody who's in a upset nervous system, and here's where Daniel Siegel, as he pointed out to me, that I should differentiate. He says, you need to differentiate more, Maria. So you know it's not your nervous system. So it means it's not yours. You're attuning to the person because we're mammals. We, we will co-regulate. Oh, yes, that's why. Back to the zero-year-old and why evil doesn't exist. The zero-year-old's nervous system is not something that actually uses thinking. It's organizing itself, and then it's going to have a way it regulates. So if it's not in an environment that's actually a third at least attunement, and then those parents, or at least one of the parents, know how to create repair, 
and see they can have different types of attachment category relationships with the parents and all of their siblings and all of whoever because we're allo parenting so i'm not going to bore you with too much of the psychoeducation because i actually have other things that i want to get to long story short if you know what it means to be a human you know that evil doesn't exist and that people if they're not nice to you it's probably because they're triggered they don't know that their adaptive child is there in fact they're throwing all the whole hero, villain, and rescuer people, they love to talk in ways that the 5D mystic will find greatly, greatly disrespectful towards a whole bunch of, like what they're doing with the whole twin flame thing. Completely disrespectful. Completely off, 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 off. And in fact, that's why there's only paid subscription-based model content for anyone who's 5D, because they will know it's off. The minute they hear energy vampire dark auras or the whole runner chaser and plus minus, yes, yes, I got what they're explaining. I know energy. <laughs> but what we have is you and I are two human beings and you have this right here. It's called a skull. So no matter how many ways the spiritual in the middle people want to twist and turn and talk about a dynamic that is a magnet, I'm going to talk about something called the mouth. You know what I love about education? The psycho educator. So here's the deal. One TikTok dude in one minute, he does this. Stand up. And then he says, how many of you stood up? That's free will. So we're going to also get into that at some point. I'm purchasing a book that talks about how we don't have free will. Can't wait to read that one. Because at the end of the day, see, if you create a relationship with your feminine and your masculine and you're using the integrated brain and restorative embodied self, so all of this is your sanctuary and you have fun in here, oh, which is, by the way, inner growth mindset. So let me say this. People who are not in a mindset that is inner growth, that's why they don't know fun in their brain because they're having what is unfortunate, as Tara Brock points out, rumination. It's actually people who circle themselves and they're using the dark sides of neuroplasticity, so their imagination, they're in hero, villain, rescuer, and they never get out of that. So they're in an entire nightmare their entire life. And then the body, though, is in a biochemistry of fear. So even though they think that they're getting into some type of... It's not actually. And actually, that's why that word evil, if you're 5D mystic, remember, there is not evil. There is not devil. There are people. And they all began at zero years of age. And their first seven months of life is where their attachment system was trying to get this contingent communication it thought it would get. So the body knew a sense of safety, even if it was for a millisecond, which is why the 5D mystic knows we're all light workers. Because it's the compassion beyond the reason of the Zen master that allows a person, I see you, and I don't judge you. And those fragments, when they come up, guess who they're going to go poking at if the person doesn't say, wow, I'm feeling pretty upset right now, but this person's done nothing to me <laughs> except for be nice. I'm going to talk about what I'm feeling because it's a human being. Let me be respectful. Let me be honest. Let me have direct communication, shall I? I'm really upset and scared right now. Lo and behold, the use of words. So here's where we're going to end that side note and then move into what I really wanted to share with you today. As Sadhguru points out, the ultimate nature of humanity can come forth if what you remove from the mind is um, fear, guilt, and silly rewards. Now, as he talked about this, I was like, wow, he's talking about the adaptive children. So when people, by the way, use words from psych education, they, they label you something, just remember to share with them, thank you for your thoughts. If I actually feel that I need a therapist diagnosis, I will go and handle it. But I'm so thankful you're so concerned with my well-being. Because, you know, when they use the antisocial personality, narcissism, sociopathy, or psychopathy, they should understand that we are all people. Again, we begin at zero years old. So independently from whatever their belief system is, whatever group, it does not even matter. The point is they're using a word and or more in a situation where it's unnecessary. A 5D mystic, an enlightenment soul age person, a functional adult will know how to handle that with what is true sophistication, which is, wow, that's really interesting. Actually, you know what? Tell me more. Why do you think... Why are you using this word right now? And when somebody's ever come to me and said, this is what I think I am, you know, I don't think you should use it that way. And if really you think it, then let's go and find a center somewhere so we can get a handle on it and check out. That way you can get better. Because how are you feeling? How, how are you relating to humanity? Mindful relationships. It's always about expanding. Compassion beyond a reason is because we grow together and that's how we resolve those unresolved trauma moments, which are heartbreak, gut wrench. Be kind, be loving. 
And tomorrow we have something for the new moon. I just don't know what yet. So have a great day.